blessed to the ministry of Dr. Phillips. Wow. So I'll teach a message this morning that says that I belong to the table. Tell your neighbor, say, I belong to the table. You don't sound like you belong there. Tell somebody with all of your heart, I belong to the table. You sound really, really, you're fidgeting to say, you're not sure, you're fearful. You're wondering what kind of table is it? Tell your neighbor, I belong to the table. So let's read from Second Samuel chapter 9. Second Samuel chapter 9 from verse 1. Message version. Thank you, Lord. One day David asked, Is there anyone left of Saul's family? If so, I would like to show him some kindness in honor of Jonathan. King James Version says, Is there one more person remaining in the house of Saul, left in the house of Saul, that I may show kindness? So it means that with God, there's never a bus stop. God is always thinking of much more, always thinking of who to bless, who to reach out to, always thinking about the forgotten, always thinking about the downtrodden, always thinking about the people that you would never have imagined that God can reach out to. Many times God is so dexterous in going to the people that you cannot even imagine in your heart. See how God found Tamar in the Bible. See how God found the lady like Ahab in the Bible. See how God found Mary in the Bible. All the women listed in the lineage of Jesus Christ. How did they get to be there? Because they never qualified and there was nothing in their profile that could ever bring them even into the lineage of Jesus Christ. And they were never born from the royal blood but somehow they were integrated and engrafted into the royal lineage of Jesus Christ. Every time God wants to show someone kindness he's always looking for them. He goes to the downtrodden he goes to the far places he goes to the people who have no address people who have no form of credibility people who think that they don't have reasons to live. God says those are the people that I'm looking for so someday God just woke up one day and inspired the this man to go look for somebody in the lineage of Saul that they have not been remembered in the past 40 years. He said, is there somebody there? Verse 2. It happened that a servant from Saul's household called Ziba was there. They called him into David's presence and the king asked him, are you Ziba? He said, yes, sir. He replied. And in verse 3, the king asks, is there anyone left from the family of Saul so that I can show some godly kindness? And Ziba told the king, yes, there is Jonathan Song who is lame on both feet. Verse 4, the king said, where is he? They said, he's living at the home of Machir, the son of Amer in Lodabar. And in verse 5, King David didn't lose a minute. He sent and got him from the home of Machir, the son of Amel in Lodeba. He said the king didn't lose a minute in this year 2020. God will not lose a minute over your life. Can you imagine every minute breaking breakthroughs, breaking, bringing all kinds of favor to you? When Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, who was the son of Saul, came before David, he bowed deeply, abasing himself, honoring David, and David spoke to him. He said, Mephibosheth, he said, yes, sir. In verse 7, don't be frightened. And David said, I would like to do something special for you in memory of your father, Jonathan. How many of you are expecting God to do something special for you this year? Wow. He said, I'll do something special for you. He said, to begin with. To begin with, I'm returning you to all the properties of your grandfather, Saul. Furthermore, from now on, you will take all your meals at my... You didn't see it. You will take all your meals at my... You will take all your meals at my... Verse 8. Shuffling and stammering, not looking him in the eye. 
Mephibosheth said, Who am I that you pay attention to a straight dog like me? David then called on Ziba, Saul's right hand man, and told him everything that belonged to Saul and his family. I have handed over to your master's grandson. In verse 10, you and your sons and your servant will walk his land and bring in the produce. Provision for your master's grandson. Mephibosheth said himself, your master's grandson from now on will take all his meals at my table. Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Glory to God. I'll come back to this story. But I'll first build a point from somewhere. Then we will land at this central point on this table. Hebrews 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. Thank you, Lord. So Hebrews 4, for as long then as they promise of resting in him pulls us unto God's goal. Can I have the King James Version of this? We need not that we are not qualified. So let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Help me read verse 3 together. I want to go. And in verse 4, the last verse there, he said, For he spoke in a certain place on the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest on the seventh day from all his works. Glory to God. Glory to God. And I'm so let me build a foundation before we get to the story we read. Have you ever walked into a beautiful supermarket or a beautiful shop? And you saw it and you loved maybe you entered into a boutique and you saw a shoe that you really loved and when you got closer to seeing the shoes you found out that the shoe was beyond your budget so let's assume you walked into a shop and they told you that the the shoe is worth about um, 300,000 now so you love the shoe the shoes are beautiful but when you got into the shop, you found out that it was beyond what you have or what you can afford. So you'll find out that the shoes are available. You really want to wear the shoes, but you don't have capacity to buy the shoe. But it does not negate the fact that the shoes are available. Are we together? So you want a really good car. There's no car that you want that is not available. How many of you want a really good car? Let me see your hands. Okay. But you know the, the cars are available. There are many car shops everywhere. But what's stopping you from getting that car could be that you don't have as much as you can afford to pay for the car. So also in the spirit realm, everything you would ever need is available. Come on, are we together? It's available. Everything you are praying about is available. But not everybody can touch what is available. Not everybody can live onto the reality of what is available. You know how much in your mind that you feel that this year, let me just go abroad and chill for three weeks. How many of you want that kind? Of, just go for three weeks. Let me just go and clear my head. Nigeria is too much. It's too, the stress is too much. Let me go and clear my head. Then you check your account balance. And by record, you know how your account balance had been every month. How do you save money to be able? It's available. And there are flight tickets. So, America is ready to receive you. UK is ready to receive you. Dubai is ready to receive you. Ghana is ready to receive you. Cameroon is ready to receive you. Togo is ready. They are ready. Virgin is ready to give you a ticket. 
BA is ready to give you a ticket. Epis, Asma, late Nigeria Airways, they are ready to give you a ticket. Can you pay for it? That's where the problem is. So you find that everything is ready. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Somebody say, God has blessed me. Who has blessed us? So the reality is that we look at what the word of God says about our lives. And we look at the reality of our lives and they don't match together. A book shall be written, shall be opened up, and another book shall be opened. So every man has two books open for him according to Revelation. So there is a book that was written which was predestination on how you should come on earth and live your life. You were predestinated, it was written. And the second book will be open. How you lived your life all through when you were on earth. The things you wrote with your life. Then they check what was written and what you lived. And they check whether it is what? Matching or not. If it doesn't match, you don't hear a good news from your savior. So you look at the potentials. You look at the things that you believe. And you see the things that you are experiencing. But they are not matching up together. That's what the Bible calls when men come short. So you see the scripture that says that for all have sinned, many have sinned and they have come short of the glory of God. So the word come short is not just a word that, I mean this was inspired, it's not just a word that, that has to do with sin or repentance. To come short means a lot of things. Many of us are coming short in a lot of things in our lives. We look at the scripture, we look at how we're living, but we are coming short. To come short is to get something but not everything that you want. To come short is to desire something but not able to receive that thing. So you get some things but you cannot get everything that you always want for yourself. And you know that in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 4, it says that we've received great and exceeding promises while we became the partakers of the nature of God. That those things are available for us. Glory to God. In 2 Kings 8 verse 5, verse 56 said, Blessed be the God who has given us rest on all sides, and none has failed of all his promises towards us. But somehow we come short. We come short. When we offend God, we come short of the glory of God. When we can't live the kind of life that God wants us to live, we come short of it. So what does it mean to come short? I said number one, to get something but not get everything. Number two, to get less than what you should have in life. Getting less than what you should have in life. Romans 8 verse 32. He says that if God could not spare his own son, how much more? What can he not give to you? Romans 8 32. What can he not give to you if he can't even spare his own son? Psalm 84 verse 4 and Psalm 85 verse 12. He said that he has blessed us with his hand and many have not received the things that he has given. So you find that, that you get less than what you should have in life. That's what it means to come short. Another thing that it means coming short is that when you get something different from what you have or what you want. So you pray to God for something, you get something different. And because you are desperate, you wouldn't wait to find out why you got something different. Then you just keep, you just go for what came next, next to you. And that's why many, I've shared this story many times in life. And um, I, I think it will help somebody. I remember some years ago when I was going to change the, the university and get into another one. And I got, I just went into the campus to see a girl. I went to see a girl, not because I wanted admission. I went to see a girl. When I was done with the girl, I was entering the campus shuttle. As I got into the campus shuttle, I heard three girls discussing, listen to this, that tomorrow is the final supplementary exams for admission. As I entered into the shuttle with one leg, I jumped back with my right leg. And I went to meet the girls. What are you talking about? And you know how girls make you feel like you mean like nothing. When you are saying hi, they are saying bye. So it means nothing. I said, what? We're not talking to you. We're just cool. I said, I heard something. 
You know, because when I heard what they said, something came to my mind. Two years ago, I remember God told me that, okay, when you change your school, I'm going to bring you to this school and all of that. But I didn't believe what God said. But there are times God tells you something, you just write it down. But you, you, but you know that he's joking, right? But you just write it down so that you do not look like unbelief, but you know that he's joking. How many of you have been there? He says something really big, but you just write it down so that it doesn't, but you know that he's joking. So I jumped back and I, she said, hey, we're talking about this. Please, we are serious here. I said, tell me about it. I said, the exam is tomorrow, final. I said, where do they sell the form? Showed me the admission office. That was 5 p.m. I went to the admission office and I said to them, I want to buy a form. I heard that there's an, a supplementary exam tomorrow. The man said, are you crazy? He said, they have written final exam. This is just the last batch. So you've not written, you want to buy form today? When will you write the exam? And the man really came up so proud. This is not lasso. This is not this. This is not that. Please, we don't do that here. I said, I, I, I feel I, I need to get a form. When it was 6 o'clock, he called the security man. As he was calling them on the phone, I walked out of his office. I went into a place. I never knew where it was. It was a library. I got into the library and I saw a woman who is pregnant. I said, ma, I need to buy a form. She said, what form? I said, for admission. I said, they don't sell form here. This is a library. I said, I know, but I think you can help me. Because somehow an information came to my mind that God spoke to me like two years before and he said that I was going to give you to come here. And it just dawned on me that, wow, this thing can be possible. So the woman said, please don't disturb me. I'm closing by 6.15. I cannot, I don't know anything about the form. I sat down with the woman there and I was pacing around. When she was closing the shop, she said, young man, what's your problem? I said, nothing. I just need a form. She said, why, what, why are you behaving like this? Then he said, follow me. 6.15. I followed her into a place. She explained my situation to a particular man. I don't know what happened. They gave me the form. Listen, listen to the story. I took the form. They said I should pay. You know, it's when you leave the house with the intention of buying a form. That's when you hold money. <laughs> so when they said I should pay, it dawned on me that I was not ready for life. And I told them, eh, excuse me, I really don't have this money. Ah, that's when they knew that I was serious. Mm, my case is different. I begged and begged and begged and begged. I don't know why that woman started fronting for me, started speaking for me. She said, give, please give him the form. The man said, then when will he submit? I said, I will submit tomorrow morning. By the time we're done with discussion, he said, go. I took the form home. Ladies and gentlemen, I filled the form in my house overnight. The passport had to come out. Everything had to come out. I submitted 9.30. I sat for the exam, 10 o'clock. Listen, when the result came out, my name didn't come out. That, that's some trouble. First list, it didn't come out. Second list, it didn't come out. Then I went to the admission office again. I said, sir, do you remember me? He said, I don't remember you. Then I explained my story to him. He said, what are you doing? How did you get the form in this place? What are you doing here? I said, that's me. I said, I've written the exam. The problem is that my name didn't come out in the second list. He said, that means you're a dollar. Dollar. I said, I'm not a dollar. And I, I was... I mean, I was really sure because I think I passed the exam. So what they, when my result came out, they told me I got um, 69. They told me I got, no, sorry. They told me I got uh, 47, sorry, 47. And I said, I cannot get 47. And I was bragging. You know, when you see me, you think something is wrong with me. A mental health issue. I said, I cannot get 47. The man called me to his office and looked at me sternly. He said that, if we check your result and it is still 47, even if any angel wants to help you in this institution, I will block you. She said, do you agree with it? I said, yes, sir. So we went to the system. As I was, as I was saying that, yes, sir, I was praying the spirit. <laughs> you shall not be ashamed. Open the system. They checked it, said, what's my name? He asked me my name five times. By the time I, he was done with my name, he said, is this my name? He said, yes. Check what was there. 74. 74. He looked at me. He said, I'm sorry. Then, that went. Then I said, come and pay acceptance fee. I've never heard it in my life. <laughs> I should come and pay 100,000 naira. That is non-refundable. The school I was in, we paid 20-something thousand. So, you now pay 100, this one is not school fees, so acceptance fee that you have accepted. I've never heard it in my life before. And it was 100,000 naira. Where will I find that kind of money from? Of course, when I go home, I went to me, community effort. How do we raise this money? 
How do we raise this money? We couldn't raise it. They gave me two weeks, two weeks passed, three weeks passed, four weeks passed, five weeks passed. One day I was praying in my devotion around 4, 30 in the morning and somebody called me on the phone. It was a brother. He said, do you know I did a deal with my, with my MD. My MD was supposed to give me one million. Can you imagine giving me 500,000? I said, excuse me, this is early in the morning. I am praying. <laughs> I caught the call. Then he called me back again. So I'm serious about what I'm saying. I said, I'm also serious. He said, the problem is that I woke up this morning and God said that I should give you 100,000 naira. I said, when did they pay you the money for this deal? He said, last week. I said, and you are just telling me now. 5 a.m., I was in his house. I took the check. I didn't say thank you. Listen to this. I mean, because he said God said he should give me. So he doesn't need me. The person to thank him is God. I picked up the check. I went to all the banks in Surulere. I couldn't, they said that I can't get admission that the thing has timed out or something. Went to Zenith Bank, went to GT Bank, went to all kinds of bank. How can I get this far? And you tell me I can't get the admission. I picked up the check. I drove down to the place. I went to the bank. I mean, there's a bank inside the square. I went there. And I said that I want to pay school fees. All the tellers knew that there was trouble that day. They said, I cannot pay, that it has timed out, there's nothing I can do. I was shouting, shouting, the manager came in. He said, what is your problem, young man? I said, can we see in private? I followed him to his office. He said, what is it? I said, I need to pay. I said, if you know where I'm coming from. If you know, and you know, you see, and those times, eh, I used to listen to a combination of Bishop Oedeko and Pastor George Adigwe. You know, a combination of that two is a mad combination. I'm telling you, I mean, so bad boys, Bishop Wedebo is giving you, that one is giving you. Reverend George can give you 200 scriptures in 45 minutes. Ha! I was that bold. So I got there and I said, can we see in private? He said, yes. He said, he said, there's no form, young man, don't waste your time here. I said, sir, we're in private here, let me tell you the truth. I, do you know I can remove you from this seat? Listen, by way of sickness and disease. Or remove this seat away from you by way of death. I said, I can do it. The man shifted back. He was afraid. He said, I think there's one more form for you. <laughs> the man held me by the hand because he has never heard anybody speak like that to him. You know, and because I, I looked gentle when I came, you know, I can be that deceptive. He took me by the hand, collected my money, went to the teller, paid for me, and I got that admission. Ladies and gentlemen, you would have chickened out of life if you didn't stay longer. <laughs> Coming short could be that you are getting something different from what you desire. For some people, getting something later than God's at the appointed time for you. What will be the usefulness of your tooth? Or meat rather, when you have no tooth to take it. So you're praying to God for meat. God, when will my meat come? God, when are you going to satisfy me? God, when is my life going to be like this? God, when is my life going to take shape? And all of that is happening and it's coming late. Then when it now comes, I've met people who, maybe somebody who's getting married at 40, and I say, are you excited you're getting married? I said, no, nah, I'm not. Because you know what? Somehow in the process, they have entered into some level of bitterness and offense that even when the miracle came, they were not excited. They have lost themselves even into the process. Getting something later than the appointed time that God has for you. Coming short could be getting something the same way you have always gotten it. Zechariah 10 verse 8. He said, I will increase you better than how I have blessed you before. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. You see, you see what it says there. He says that, and look, let, me, let me first quote Proverbs 4, 7, 2. He says, the path of the righteous is like a shining light. And it keeps shining brighter and brighter and brighter. Then three eighteen of, of Corinthians says that as we behold the glory of the Lord in the mirror, we are what? Changed. So that means that the life of a believer is a life of progress. So if you make, like I always say that there's progress of a dog, there's progress, there's a speed of a snail, and there's also speed of a cheetah. So you can determine the kind of speed that you want. But the path of the righteous is like a shining light. So God does not want 2010 to be like 2011. He doesn't want to be like 2012. He doesn't want 2020 to be like 2019. And can I shock you? He doesn't want this new decade to look like the old decade. He blesses us with something new. As we behold the glory of the Lord in the mirror, we are changed. Somebody say, I'm changing. Say like you mean, say, I'm changing. Say, I'm getting better. God is a God of progress. 
So we ought to be making progress. We ought to be making progress. Number five, coming short is when you take something like others are receiving. The way unbelievers and believers get things, the same way you get it. You've gone through lots of process and when you're going to get something, you, God just restores you and it doesn't look like anything was, was really restored for your wasted years. So you pray to God for something for seven years. So let's assume that, um, let me use a monetary value to help us understand well, you know, because I know every Nigerian likes money. So if you are believing God for um, a 200,000 naira, for example, and you believe God for seven years, then after seven years, God now gives you 200,000 naira. There's no sense in it. And let me tell you why. Because by the time after that seven years, when the 200,000 came to you, a lot of things have happened. Inflation has gone on it. The people who were on 200,000 then were believing God for another 200,000 or for another 1 million. So when God is restoring you, he's just giving you 200,000. As at that time, it may just not be what you need again. And that's why I said that when people pray, don't just pray for restoration, pray for compensation. That when God restores you, he gives you what you were asking for, but when he compensates you, he closes the gap of the years. That's why he says that I will restore unto you the wasted years. That the caterpillars, the grasshoppers, the palmer worms have eaten. There are things that eat years. There are they don't eat, they don't eat leaves, they eat years. So you don't need God to restore you. God, see the process that I'm in. See how life is shattering me and I'm staying. I'm at peace with your word. I'm standing on the word. God, don't just bless me, but compensate me. Somebody said, I said, God, don't just bless me. Compensate me also. Come on, say that very well. Say, God, don't just bless me. Compensate me also. So taking something as others are receiving. That's what it means to come short. The come short means feeding on crumbs. Feeding on crumbs. A little here, a little there. A small house, a small job, small friends, small contract, small car, small food. Everything small. Manage, manage, manage. Small, 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 small. And some people have, have, they, they have come into that re reality that maybe that's how God has destined their life to go. Everything small. Feeding on crumbs. I like the story of Lazarus in the Bible. In Luke chapter 16 verse 21. It says that and Lazarus desired to eat crumbs. I, see, I've never seen a human being like that in my life. Give me that scripture. Luke 16 21. This was the story of the rich man and Lazarus. So you know, the, what excites you is that the rich man went to hell. And the poor man went toward heaven. So the poor man would always go toward heaven. Okay. <laughs> you see, what does the Bible say about desires? It said, I will fulfill the to be fed with crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. So it was his desire. It wasn't that um, they didn't charm him. It wasn't somebody from the village. That held him back. He desired to eat crumbs. And God said that Lazarus. Uh, your desire is my command. If that's what you desire. I will give it to you every day. See listen to me. God can't change the desires of your heart. He can't. He will only give you desires of your heart. He desired to eat crumbs. And I said coming short. Is also you feeding on crumbs. In Nigeria too many people. We are feeding on crumbs. A little here, a little there, a little here, a little there. Everything small, small, small. The robot says that tissue any bar, ta, amount what? Amount for it depends on the quantity of the yam. There's a yam that your hand can cover. There's one that your hand that your hand will not even show in the midst of the yam. I tell them I change that proverb. He desired to be fed with crumbs. That fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and they licked his sores. A life of shame because he was following Christ. He desired to eat crumbs. 
crumbs in the Greek means having things in small quantity. Having things in small quantity. It's a slang for something that is contemptible. Something loathsome. Something loathsome. Something really, really small in value. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare this morning, every, every desire for crumbs, they are broken in the name of Jesus anybody sitting eating crumbs in their life today i declare that those things are broken in the name of jesus i declare that they are broken in the name of jesus somebody shouted say no more crumbs shout it like you know it said no more crumbs say it like you know it said no more crumbs god is not a god of crumbs he's a god of the tables it's a God of the tables. Why would the rich man be eating on the table? And Lazarus says, all I desire to eat is what falls from the table of the rich man. When you serve, my pastor says that you can't serve the most high and be the most low. God is a God of the tables. But the question is, are you interested to sit on that table? Everything is available. Get into that shop. You see the shoes, like I told you, it's 200,000, but you don't have the money, but it's available. But while you are contemplating, while you are contemplating, I have said this story before. There, there was a time, Pastor Debe shared this story some years ago, that every time they go, they go to pray on a particular land when it was a lecturer. So they go and pray on this particular land. So, what, and they had like the most consistent people praying on that land. And they loved them so much. So one day when he was done praying with his team, the owner of the land said, I want to sell this land. This large hectares, I think is about, um, I think about about 40 acres of land, sorry. And he said, I want to sell it to you. And Pastor said, ah, because he had a camp in, in his mind. He was like, wow, this is great. We'll pray about it. So what, they took one week off to pray about it. So they were going to confess everywhere the soul of my feet shall tread upon it shall be declared as mine. So they were, they were pacing on their shoes and they were praying and they were contemplating the scripture and Monday, Tuesday and on Thursday, one man who didn't come, he didn't pace around at all. He just came, gave the check of the money and when they were done praying, the owner of the land said that somebody has paid, you can't come here to pray again. He said he pained him. He said he pained him, he touched him. Of course, God is a God of restoration. A week after, he went back to God and God spoke to his heart. And guess what? God gave him where they have as, 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 as redemption come today, you know, because he stayed on earth. But the idea is this. God does not want us to be small. Say in the name of Jesus, I refuse to be small. Say in the name of Jesus, I refuse to feed them crumbs. In the name of Jesus, God is a God of the tables. He wants every of his children to come to the table. He wants us to come to the table. As we have started this year, break away from every thought pattern, every, every thought process that has to do with smallness. Break it. A little here, a little there, a little here, a little there. It's time for progress. Amen. 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 It's time for progress. It's time to go forward. Somebody's going to hit on the news this year. That person did come to church today. That amen needs some massage. That amen needs some help. He's the God of the tables. So let's get back to the story. In 2 Samuel chapter 9, he says that, Is there anyone that is remaining in the house of Saul that I may show kindness unto him? And I, I, I know in the spirit that this year, God is showing kindness to a few people. In the name of Jesus Christ. This guy has been forgotten. And let me tell you a little bit about the story. He is the grandson of Saul. But because of the things that happened to his grandfather. He was a terrorist. Nobody wanted to do anything with that lineage and with that family. So guess what? When Jonathan died, he gave birth to a son called Mephibosheth. But all the things that Jonathan ever had. All the lands, everything. They took it away from him. Now Mephibosheth was giving birth to. One day, they sent them packing from the house they were living. And his nurse decided to help him. And as they were, he was just about six months old. As they were carrying him and running away from the terrorists. Guess what? He fell down from the hand of the people carrying him. And he lost his leg. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anybody carrying you and hurting you. I declare that that is over this year in the name of Jesus. He was carrying him. But he fell from their hand. And that's why the help of man is vain. 
carried him and went to lock him up somewhere. What can the nurse do? She only had a small house. Put him in the small house, locked him there. She goes to work, come back in the night. Mephibosheth can go nowhere. Where he sleeps is where he eats. Where he eats is where he pulls. He's got no legs at all. And his father was the grand king in that same land. But everybody soon forgot about Saul because of his ways. Then God woke up one day through his servant David. He said that is there one more man that I can show mercy for in the house of Jonathan. Can I prophesy to somebody that in the name of Jesus Christ you will be that one man that God is looking for to show kindness to this year 2020 in the name of Jesus. That amen sounded like you didn't believe it. That means a book of remembrance will be opened unto you. You shall be looked for. Grace will find you. Grace will locate you. Grace will lift you up. He will come to your shadows. He will come to your house. Some of you have no place. You have no address. You are not known. Your family has no name. Has nothing. But God said, I am ready to show kindness to somebody. I declare that God will find you. In the name of Jesus. Then in verse 2. Of that same second Psalm 9. So Mephibosheth has been eating crumbs all his life. If the nurse comes home today and says, Mephi, there's no food today, that's all. There's food today, that's all. He can't even complain. He can't even say, Do you know my father? Well, my grandfather was the king of this land. He can't complain. He was locked up. He has not seen outside of his house for many years. He was in darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ, anyone who has been going through darkness in many years, I declare that today, by the time of the Spirit, the process is over. In the name of Jesus, God is about to bring you into a new dawn. I declare that there shall be a shift, a shift in your house, a shift in your home, a shift in that career, a shift in your emotions. Shout that amen like you know it. And they said that there is one person, there is one man. One boy that is living there. But let's ask Ziba. As Ziba came, Ziba was a prosperous man. He had a wife. He had about 15 children. And he had about 26 servants. So meaning that he had over 40 people that he had around. He was a prosperous man. He was the right hand man of the king. And guess what? They called on him. And he said that, is there somebody that's in verse 3? Is there one more person in the house of Jonathan that I can show mercy unto? And Ziba said unto him. He said, Jonathan had yet a son. Which is late on his feet. I declare to somebody you shall be remembered this year. This year will not pass without you being remembered. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everywhere you have been forgotten you shall be remembered. Just like Mordecai was lifted up you shall be lifted up. Say that amen like you know it. Ziba the prosperous man said there's one boy he's lame on the feet. Guess what the king said in the next verse. And the king said to him he said where is he? Where is he? I prophesied to somebody. The kings will be interested in your life this year. Because the, my Bible tells me that the gift of a man make it room before him. And he helps him to stand before kings. I declare to somebody under the sound of my voice. The kings will be interested in you. They'll be interested in your intelligence. The wisdom that God has given to you, they'll be interested in it. In the name of Jesus, you're about to get something huge, something bigger than you have ever happened, that I've never handled it in your life. In the name of Jesus, no more smallness. Small people are not looking for you. Small contracts are not looking for you. The king is looking for you. The king is looking for you. If you're that person, say that, Amen. The king said, where is he? There's urgency on this matter. And the Ziba said unto the king, behold, he's in the house of Machir. Machir is the name of that nurse. He said, he's in the house of Machir. That's where he's been living all his life. The son of Amiel, and they were living in Lodeba. I know Lodeba means emptiness. A nurse that cannot handle anything, that cannot even provide a meal for herself, locked up Mephibosheth. In fact, Mephibosheth means a bringer of shame. So they named him after his father died, and they called him a bringer of shame, and he's living with an incapacitated nurse in a city called emptiness. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break every bondage of emptiness, every bondage of smallness, every bondage of struggle, every bondage of being boxed. In the name 
name of Jesus in the year 2020 no more crumbs I said no more crumbs I said no more crumbs I said no more crumbs shout out amen like you know it he lives in Lodeba and in verse 5 guess what the king said the king sent for him and fetched him out of the house of Machir and out of the emptiness I prophesied to somebody you are coming out of that place you are coming out of the house you are coming out of that dungeon you are coming out of that job you are coming out of that small place you are coming out of that small place God will unbox you God will unbox you God will unbox you God will unbox you, you. shout that amen like you know it he said fetch him out grace will find you this year Ah, you will just be in that same place and people will think it's going to be the same business as usual but God is going to come for you grace will find you grace will spring you grace will lift you up shout it amen then in verse 6 guess what he said he said go look for him then when he got to verse 6 when Mephibosheth the son of I couldn't imagine Somebody was knocking in the house of Mephibosheth. Nobody had ever come to look for him in his life. Who was interested in a dead dog? But he was the son or the grandson of a king. Nobody was interested in him. He had a knock for the first time. When he had that knock, something would have told him that ah, the works of your grandfather has caught up with you. The people who killed him, they have finally found out that you are alive. You are the next to die. So he will hear the knock, but he won't open the door. I declare to somebody this year, the next knock on your door, the next mail, the next phone call, it's going to be a mail, a phone call of blessing that will change your life, that will bring a shift into your life. If you're interested, say amen. amen. Then I can imagine him just, just picking a little strength to open the door. He opened, I mean, he, he, he can't stand. He had to just open the door himself. And they said to him, Mephibosheth, bringer of shame, the king is looking for you. He was a bringer of shame, but they said, the king is looking for you. Some of you, you've been labeled. You've been designed. You look like a bringer of shame. Nothing good has come out of your life. Nothing good has sprung up from your life. And they thought that your life will end like this. But that devil is a liar declaring the name of Jesus Christ. God is going to do something that is exceeding abundantly above what you can think or imagine in this year 2020. In the name of Jesus, God will bring good things out of your life. Good things will spring out of your life. In the name of Jesus, say that amen like you know it. He said, fetch him out. And when he got there, he said, he came to the king's palace for the first time. And his father was a king. His grandfather was a king. For the first time in his life, he's seen the palace. Can I break something here this morning? Something is about to happen to you this year. You are about to appear in the palace. And that's something you should hear and just scream about. You are about to come into the palace. In the name of Jesus, I declare divine endorsements, divine validation, divine recommendation, divine help. In the year 2020, you will not be small. You will not be small. You will not be small. In the name of Jesus, shout amen three times. He showed up in the king's palace. When he showed up there, he bowed, he reverenced. And David said, bring her of shame. And he answered, yes, sir. In verse 7, David said unto him, he fear not. There was so much fear in his heart. He thought he was about to die. But he said, fear not. It's not what you thought. It's not business as usual. There is a shift. Something has happened in your lineage. I'm about to bring kindness into your lineage. He said, relax. Relax. All you went through was just a springboard for what I'm about to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, I prophesy to somebody, every setback is bringing a comeback to your life. In the name of Jesus, your trials will be turned into triumph. Your message will be turned into a message. In the name of Jesus, you won't die in that process. You won't die in that process. You won't lose yourself in that process. In the name of Jesus, say that amen like you know it. 
He said, Mephibosheth, fear not. I will show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake. We may not have a Jonathan. We may never have known a Jonathan in our lives. But I know that God will show me kindness for Jesus' sake. My Jonathan is Christ who died on the cross. I declare and decree because of Jesus, because of Christ, because of his death and his resurrection. I declare in the name of Jesus, God will show you kindness this year. I said, God will show you kindness this year. I said, God will show you kindness this year. In the name of Jesus. He said, I will restore to you all the land of Saul, your father. Give me the message version of this. I will restore to you all the land. Isaac dug a well. The first one, they took it from him. All Isaac was looking for was a well of water. Dug the first one, took it. Dug the second one, took it. Dug the third one. And he was angry. This is my father's well. This is Abraham. Just like, just like the daughters of Zelopad. They took all the things that belonged to them. And they took all the lands, all their inheritances. And they rendered them helpless. I declare today in the name of Jesus. You are about to get a restoration this year. A compensation is coming your way. In the name of Jesus all God told Joseph is that I'm bringing you into the palace but guess what happened he had to be sold into slavery they threw him inside inside the well they, they, they did all kinds of him the, the lady lied against against him sent him to jail then God said all I want to do is that I want to bring you to the palace why will I go through all of this just to bring me to the palace then God showed up God said that I will not just bring you to the palace I would also give you a kingdom and I'll make you a prime minister and the divine lineage of Jesus Christ I declare and decree that in the year 2020, God will restore you. God will compensate you. All wasted years shall be restored. All wasted years shall be compensated. In the name of Jesus. So that amen like you know it. I'm returning to you all the properties. If anything left your hand last year, it's coming back this year. Sevenfold is coming back this year. Sevenfold is coming back this year. Sevenfold is coming back this year. In the name of Jesus. I'm returning all the properties. He said, furthermore, from now on, you will take your meals at my table. Today, I declare, everyone who has been going through crumbs, crumb house, crumb job, crumb salary, crumb car, everything small, everything managed, meals small, everything small. I came to break something in the spirit this morning. You are coming to the table. I break every stronghold of smallness, every stronghold of crumbs. I break it in the name of Jesus. You are coming out of the crumbs. You are coming to the table. You are coming to the table. Shout that amen like you know it. You are coming to the table. You are coming to the table. You are coming to the table in the name of Jesus. Why would you go under the table when it says he has set a table for me? In the presence of my enemies. It's your enemies that should be under the table. Picking the crumbs. But we've been Christians, believers. We have been we have been the one walking by the sons of Ishmael. Riding on horses. But I declare this year that there's going to be a shift. We are coming to the table. The table of politics. The table of government. The table of education. We are coming to the table. The table of family. The table of religion. We are coming to that table. We won't play small. We won't die small. We won't remain small. In the name of Jesus. In your lineage you will not be small. Say that amen like you know it. From now on. You will eat on this table. I declare as the angel of this house. From now on. You will begin to eat on the table. You will begin to eat on the table. In the name of Jesus. As I conclude in verse 8. I love this story so much. I love it so much. Then in verse 8, shuffling and stammering, he was not looking at David in the eye because Mephibosheth was asking himself, how did I get here? How did I get here? He was stammering. He was shuffling. He can't believe it. It was too good to be true. In the year 2020, you would ask yourself, how did I get here? There is a blessing coming your way. You tell yourself, how did I get here? How, there is an avalanche coming. You say, how did I get here? I thought yesterday I was in darkness. I thought yesterday I was labor. But in the name of Jesus Christ, things will happen head on heels for you. 
blessings on blessings in the name of Jesus. Say that amen like you know it. He said, who am I that you pay attention to a dog like me? Verse 9. David said, I'm not done. He now called Ziba, the right-hand man, who is his personal assistant, who was prosperous. 15. 15 and 24. He was that prosperous. He had 40 people guiding him. 15 servants. 24 slaves. He called Ziba. And Saul's right hand man and said to him, everything that belonged to Saul and his family, I have handed them over back to your master's grandson. Verse 10. You and your sons and your servants will begin to walk on his land. Ziba said, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I am a man of influence. I've worked with you. I've served you. I'm prosperous. For me to have 15 sons and to have 24 slaves. I'm not a small man. You want me to begin to serve a lame man. A lame man. Ladies and gentlemen, if God remembers you, there's nothing anybody can do about it. If God decides to open your file, there's nothing anybody can do. See, but he said, you will go and start serving him and you will bring in the produce, provision. You start going to the farmer and start serving Mephibosheth. And he said, Mephibosheth himself from now on will be coming to my table. Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. So plus Ziba, that's how many? That's how many? 36 so David said 36 people will begin to serve you Mephibosheth Mephibosheth had no legs he was lame but God gave him 18 legs right leg 18 legs left leg 18 men will carry him by the right 18 legs will carry him by the left he had 36 PA yes he had no leg in the name of Jesus Christ everywhere you have been incapacitated everywhere you felt that you are not enough everywhere you think that you can't do it you can't achieve it I declare and decree that the heavens be open upon your life in this year 2020 in the name of Jesus I declare that the heavens be open upon your life in the name of Jesus lift up your hands everybody and shout heaven Upper, shout it against the heavens. Upper, one more time, say my heaven. Upper, he said you will begin to serve him. The people God is bringing in your life. Get ready. God is bringing unusual relationships into your life. God will bring people that will bless you. God will bring people that will change you. That amen needs some help. That amen needs some help. verse 11 ah, you see he said they will begin to eat he said and Mephibosheth ate at David's table just like one of the royal family so Ziba does not eat on the king's table so Ziba will be outside and Mephibosheth will be eating inside I don't know where they have thrown you out from in this year you are coming back inside I don't know the association they said you are not enough to be part of us I declare this year you are coming inside every place where you have been rejected you are about to be called back you are coming inside you are coming inside you are coming inside he said by a prophet he brought them out and by a prophet he brought them in today in the name of Jesus I bring you out of the crumbs and out of the smallness and I bring you into an avalanche of God's blessings in the name of Jesus We've been praying and fasting. Take this prayers really serious. This is the climax. God said I should just proclaim these blessings. Imagine David. It is only from here to here that is a human being. Everything below is a shame. There will not 16 men right, 16 men left will not carry him to the table. You know some people will be wondering how can he be eating on the table? If you start, you know, he looks only okay from head to the waist. If you check under, eh, it's shame. Eh, but anybody who goes under the king's table, he will have to explain to the king what he's looking for. Uh, anybody who is asking questions over your life, God will answer them. 
I said God will answer them. When he's on the table, nobody knows anything is wrong with his leg. In the year 2020, God will cover your shame. You didn't hear that. God will cover your shame. God will cover your shame. He said, for your shame, I will give you double, double honor, double blessings in the name of Jesus. He said, he began to act like one that came from the royal family. In the year 2020, I declare to you and I declare to your household, God is going to change you and bring royalty into your life in the name of Jesus. The struggle is over. The struggle is over. The struggle is over. The struggle is over. Over, God will push you forward. 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 God will push you forward in the name of Jesus. To, to, to come short is to feed on grounds, and every promise that God has given you, you will not fall short of them in the name of Jesus Christ. The year 2020, every goals you have written now, I declare that at the end of the year, you will see it and you will find out that God has been able to do exceeding abundantly above what you ask or think. In the name of Jesus, do you believe the word of the Lord this morning? I want you to give God the best praise like you have never given him this year. Give him a great shout offering this morning. Come on, come on, come on. Give God praise.